This is Angela Rosman with Women's Personal Finance, and I'm back for another mini money mindset conversation, this time talking about keeping up with the Joneses. So last night we had a book club meeting for Women's Personal Finance Insiders, where we were talking about Alyssa Davies' book, Financial First Aid. And one of the questions that she asks in the book is, what are you buying for yourself versus buying for someone else, aka the Joneses? And this conversation went actually quite differently than I think would in a typical community. Uh, you know, we, I think most of us at some point have been there where we have bought a bigger house, a nicer car, fancy clothes, gone on that fancy vacation because we're seeing it from somebody else's perspective from their, you know, highlight Instagram reel, et cetera. But what was really interesting in the conversation we had last night, again, this is a self-selected group of women and non-binary folks that are already plugged into the money community. And the examples that folks kept bringing up were not of keeping up with the Joneses, but having a hard time spending money on things that did not necessarily make financial sense. And so as we got into it, we realized that the conversation really ended up being about keeping up with the financial independence, retire early Joneses, not the typical McMansion Joneses um, that we typically think of with that comment. And so if that's you, welcome, you're in good company. And really what we started talking about was that some of your decisions have to be about quality of life. They can't just be financial decisions only. So part of this was I am looking at buying a new cargo bike and I am going to be spending $7,000 on an electric bike, which seems bananas to me. I've never even spent that much money on a whole car. So trying to convince myself of buying this $7,000 bike has been, how do I calculate out the cost savings from not driving the car? Um, I've been doing that with my current electric bike, which was a $3,000 purchase. And since having it last June, I'm about a third of the way of paying it off based on um, <clears throat> the AAA cost of mileage for a similar size car to the one I have. And so that purchase, can I can see very clearly where it's going to pay off financially. The trailer that I haul my kiddo around right now, which he is absolutely outgrowing, hence the cargo bike, that's already paid itself off because of the miles that I have ridden versus driven my car. And so that was a really easy one for me. But when we really dug down onto it with this cargo bike is that it's going to take a long time to make financial sense to spend that many dollars on a non-car vehicle. But then we started talking about like, what brings me happiness? What brings me joy? Um, you know, my lifestyle has adjusted as such that I'm biking a couple of days a week at minimum. And about two thirds or three quarters of those trips are with my son in tow. And at the point that he absolutely can't fit the trailer anymore, those trips are going to come to an end unless I buy a cargo bike. And so then we came back to, how important are those trips and why am I only using a dollar amount to justify purchase? And so this, this feels very much like the backlash opposite of keeping up with the Joneses. This is keeping up with the fire community of, am I doing the right thing with my money all the time? And sometimes that can cause us to make decisions not to buy things that are really important to us and that would actually improve our quality of life. I wasn't considering the fact that I actually really enjoy biking and I hate driving. I didn't consider the fact that especially these last few months have been really, really busy for me. And so there are days where the only outside activity I get is my to and from commute on my bicycle. Otherwise I'd be in my car anyway, doing the drive. It just takes another 20 minutes or so with a bike. So how much is my health worth? How much is my mental health worth? You know, using a, something that I'd rather have, but it's so easy to convince yourself, 
well, if I make this purchase, then I'm not putting that $7,000 into the stock market for my future 40 years down the road. And so, you know, we need to be careful not to be buying that new car because you want to look or not even you want to look like somebody else, but you see somebody else driving it and it looks fun. It looks like your life is going to be better, easier, whatever. But sometimes it actually does make your life better and easier or more enjoyable. And so it's definitely this balance as it normally is, is that, you know, the FOMO spend all your money now because we have today is it's just as harmful to go the other way of foam future FOMO of, you know, feeling like somebody else has done something better with their money than you have, or there is a better financial decision to use your money. And so, um, I'm going to be buying this bike and I'm going to love it. And I will definitely report back in a few months. I expect that I am, absolutely not going to regret the purchase. It's just really, really hard sometimes to spend the money on something that is not an essential and that is a really big dollar amount that may make your life better, even if it's spending it now, not 40 years down the line. Someone asked last night in our conversation, how would you feel about just dumping that $7,000 in the stock market? It's like, well, that that's actually easier because I'm taking care of my future self. And it's like, okay, so are you spending that money now? Or are you spending that money in the future? And sometimes the answer should be you're going to spend it now.